So Dave, I appreciate you taking some time at Mobile World Congress in Los Angeles to catch me up on the work Towglass is doing. Maybe you can give us a bit of an overview of your new system on module offering. Yeah, sure. Um, as you can see, it's right behind us. Our system on module offering is designed to speed your time to market. So with our system, we give you the ability to do pick and choose from whatever you want. So like, think of like a smorgasbord. If you want the entire system, you can buy our hardware, you can have our firmware, you can use our APIs, you can have them talk to our own cloud instance. We'll give you the, we'll give you the connectivity, and then we'll even give you the dashboard. And we'll help you modify all those things. We've got several customers around the booth, for example, that have done that. So if I'm a large enterprise or a device OEM looking to develop some machine learning AI type systems and devices, what are some of the challenges that I'm going to run into? What is Towglass doing to help your customers get over those challenges? That's a great question. Um, one of the things that we really like to do is we like to help people understand that although integrating a system seems very simple at first glance, there's a lot of complexities that are you know, really that behind the scenes type thing. One of those things is validation. You know, if you think of an iceberg as the top, that would be the building that hardware. The validation and certification of everything is the iceberg underneath. Going through the testing, you don't know what you break when you fix. You don't know how to make sure you don't break something else. We've done that, we've been doing that for a long time. For example, when you're doing something cellular, like these are all cellular, you've got to go through type approvals. You've got to go through approvals for the carriers. We've been in the antenna business our whole life. What we've done is we've done that RF and that stuff. So we, we can make that very streamlined for you. Also, writing all that firmware, and writing that firmware with good cybersecurity, because everybody's terrified of cybersecurity at this point, writing all that stuff is something that we've been doing. We're experts in the field, and we've been doing it for a long time. The last thing that we do that really makes things different is we're also very much expert in low power. So we do everything we can to minimize your system power. And you might say, is that such a big deal? You know, am I, am I wired sometimes, am I not wired? You know, when you start to do long-term operations, even going out to a remote field costs you, you know, hundreds of dollars to have a truck go out and service just replacing a $2 battery. If I can double your life by my design, I've saved you $200, not $3 for the battery. So you mentioned security, power consumption. What are some of the other big trends that are coming up in your engagements with customers pursuing this type of IoT project? One of the things that's coming up is, as you know, people want to move to this Industry 4.0 kind of standard, which is you know, effectively where machines help diagnose what's going on. The, the display behind us talks about our warehouse sensing. And with our warehouse sensing, for example, we have now integrated cameras. And one of the big design considerations, like I talked about power, is figuring out whether or not you want to be a cloud-based solution or you want to be an edge-based solution. With respect to vision, we are now focusing on an edge-based solution. We do all of our computing at the edge. We, we do all of this figuring out. And then all we do is we send a small amount of data and we can send it over a BLE link, we can send it over a Wi-Fi link or a CAT M1, thus saving you a lot of money on your connectivity. And then all of the processing happens at the edge too, so you can set alerts. So if you had this thing and you were doing warehouse sensing and something was wrong, I can even have a red light going off so the worker in the area knows there's a problem and then checks his dashboard. So you mentioned Industry 4.0, obviously a lot of action within governments, within big players in these industrial sectors and among industrial consortia to really leverage digital technologies, connectivity to transform the way they do their business. Big picture, long term, how do you see machine vision and AI really driving us towards that Industry 4.0 vision? Uh, Kind of like I said about the uh, uh, warehouse sensing, if you look at that, we're not looking at, we're, you know, you can look at a camera in the, you know, a, like this camera in the sense of a camera. We're not looking at it anymore like that. We're looking at it as, as a three space sensing device. So, you know, actually here's one of our cameras that we just designed. This was a prototype that we did in about three weeks and it's a working prototype. So, you know, it looks a little rough, but this is, again, this is our expertise. We came up with an idea and in three weeks we had a working prototype. What we're doing though is we're using those camera systems to visualize a space. We don't look at it in the, in the device as this. This is the picture you see. This is how we look at it and we look at that box as something happening. That's Industry 4.0 because it's the machine sensing a change, 
the machine acting on that change, and then the machine deciding when to involve the human. Dave, thanks so much for taking some time to tell us about the work Tau Glass is doing and really enabling this industry 4.0 vision. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you.